When I started this YouTube channel, I asked you to join along. This is because I wanted you to be part of this journey, and I am very grateful that you are here. YouTube is a very interesting platform, and there are very many reasons why people create or start a YouTube channel. It could be for personal reasons, it could be for business, but mostly people will start a YouTube channel because they want to learn a new skill and also create an extra way to earn income. And those are also my objectives. I want to learn how YouTube works. I want to see if it's possible for someone to create something from scratch and do not know how long that will take. But it is something that I'm interested to see through. And the beauty of it is that I would want you to be part of it. Which is why I'm doing this video today. This is more or less like an update of what has been going on since I started this channel. The things that I'm learning, the work that I have done, and also the struggles or challenges that I'm facing or that you might face if you start a YouTube channel. The first video I created on this channel was more or less an overview of my plan, what I intended to do over the course of the next 12 months. And I'm recording this on the 10th of February 2023, which means I have already done the entire of January. And that's what I'm going to share with you. The work that I did, was I able to actually achieve the goals that I had set for that month, and how I am going to move forward given what I have already done. And more importantly, is whether the channel is making any money. If you remember, when I started this channel, my objective was to create three videos per week. And in the course of January, it meant that for me to achieve that particular objective, I needed to create 13 videos. But looking back, I created five videos in January, which means I have a deficit of eight videos. Indication that I actually missed on the goals or objectives of January. And the way I'm going to solve this is that I'm going to add those eight videos in the course of my February work plan. To achieve my goals and objectives of three videos per week for the month of February, I'll need to create 12 videos. And because now I have an eight video deficit, the videos that I did not create in January, it means that in the course of February, then I need to create 20 videos. What that means is that in the course of this month, if you find or you see my frequency increasing, at least now you know why that will be the case. I'll try to be covering up for the deficit that I had last month so that then I can get in line with what I had already set to do. And that is the reality of YouTube. What you plan may not necessarily turn out to be the way you planned it. Things happen. Life happens. But you cannot just then look at it and say, I will not solve this particular problem because I'm already behind schedule. What I'm trying to do here is trying to sort out that particular mistake or that particular challenge that I had that I did not meet my number of videos that I needed to create and produce last month. But now I need to create a way in which to accommodate them in the coming weeks since like you and I know, you cannot go back in time. That's the challenge number one when it comes to creating videos on YouTube. That sometimes you may miss on your uploads. You may not be able to meet your targets that you have set for yourself. And that should not be a big problem. When you get behind on something, a lot of people end up abandoning the entire project altogether. Because they feel, I have already made a mistake so I cannot continue. But I think that would be the long approach when it comes to creating videos on YouTube or even live in general. If you fall behind on a certain thing, doesn't mean that you stop the entire project. Just change course, create a new plan, or at least adopt or find a way in which to accommodate what you may have missed, and then take the next step forward. Which is what I'm doing here with regard to the videos that I missed in January. I have eight videos that I'll need to accommodate in February. That means that my February uploads will move from being 12 and become 20. So you'll see more videos from me this month. And that's okay. Now, YouTube is a very good way or a form in which you can earn some extra income. And I know you'd want to find out. 
based on the fact that I only uploaded five videos in January, did I make any money from YouTube in January? And the answer is no. This is simply because one, I haven't reached the 1000 subscriber mark and also I haven't attained the 4000 watch hours. These are the things you need to have for you to qualify to join the YouTube Partner Program, which is what we'll be discussing here when it comes to YouTube monetization or at least the income report that I may be able to share with you. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to follow the process because that's what building something is about. Sometimes we get fixed on the start and the finished product that we miss the entire process. This happens a lot in life, where we only focus on the end result and never look back at the process that gave that result. If you have ever tried to do anything, you realize that the process of building that and getting to the result you want sometimes is even more important than the result that you get. So that's what I'm trying to do with you here with regards to these kind of conversations is I want to share with you the process. Yes, it is possible to start a YouTube channel and then come back months or years later and update you when it is monetized and when it is making money. But you'll have missed days and months in between where you can learn a lot of what is going on, what it takes, because I don't want you to have the long idea that this thing is easy. YouTube or starting a YouTube and growing and creating content is not easy. Probably that explains why a lot of people give up when they start. But knowing that then helps you to plan around it and know, yes, this thing is going to be tough. Uh, consistency may be a problem. I may not be excited all the time to create content, but still you need to stick to the process. You need to stick to your goal. You need to figure out a way to ensure that you are still taking steps moving forward. You are still creating content. That is the other lesson I'm learning when it comes to this YouTube journey. Is that the most important aspect of having a YouTube channel is actually creating content. Creating content when it comes to YouTube is the only thing that you can control. That means you are in charge of how many times you upload, what kind of content you create, the beauty of YouTube that you are in control. So you decide, you make a decision on how many uploads you are going to make. If you feel three times a week is too much, you can scale it down to twice or even once a week or even once a month. The idea is that you are the one in charge of this thing. So you create content that YouTube has a very good dashboard. The analytics you get on the back end of your YouTube channel is very interesting. And that's something that now I'm starting to realize that it can be very powerful if you are able to analyze that. For example, I am learning that I am getting a lot of views from countries that were not in my radar when I started this. My focus was primarily on my Kenyan audience. But now I can see I'm getting audience from the US, from the UK, from Brazil, from Mexico, all countries that were not primarily on my target list. YouTube is actually recommending my content to people far and wide and actually across the world. That's very interesting because that was not my original thinking. I thought that I would only create content primarily for Kenyans. And yes, Kenyans are the highest number of people who are viewing and watching my content. Data is showing that the audience is beyond the Kenyan borders. That's an interesting take because it can inform how then you proceed in terms of creating content. A very important data point which I'm getting on the back end is the fact that I am getting more people who are not subscribed watching my videos. And this brings me to this point of asking you to subscribe if you have not subscribed. And these data points are all important because it guides your decision making moving forward. We will continue creating videos without very much focusing on that data point until the end of March. Then I'll go back and analyze what has been going on. Where are my views coming from? Which videos are doing better? What are people interested in? At the end of March, I will look back at that data 
and see all the information that YouTube has generated or has been able to capture. I'll analyze that data to be able to make decisions on how I'll move forward in the second quarter of the year. And that's the important bit about data and entrepreneurship and what you need to do with it as a business person and particularly as a content creator. You need to use data to make decisions. It is part of business. Sometimes we get too emotional about the things that we are doing that we are not able to follow the logic and the data. Data can lead you to places probably you had not even thought before. It may help you to pivot on the business idea that you have. Data is sometimes considered even more important than oil. This is because if you have the right data and collect data and you are able to interpret it correctly, you can be able to get more than probably you would get if you did not have the data. And that's what I think if you start a YouTube channel, you should at some point start looking at data. Analyzing data as a YouTube content creator or even as a business person is very important in today's world because it can help you understand what your audience, what your customers really prefer. But when you look at data, it can start becoming your guide in terms of giving you feedback on what your audience prefers, on what is popular with the people who watch your content. And that way, you can use that information to then create content that your audience wants. It doesn't mean that you stop creating content that you enjoy. But it also helps you to know that a huge percentage of the content you are creating is content based on data, on what your audience wants. If you are creating content, you are creating content for your audience. You are trying to provide value to your audience. And then it doesn't make sense for the audience to show you what they want and then you end up ignoring it. It's good to align your interests with the interests of your audience. That way you both benefit from engaging with each other. If you would want to start or create a YouTube channel today, click or tap the video on your screen right now. You're going to learn how to start a YouTube channel, the benefits of having a YouTube channel, as well as some of the monetization strategies that you can use to make money from your YouTube content.